Hello, this is James, the creator of Mac Caching. I'm about to come out with version 1.0 and I thought I'd sh take a few minutes and show you some of the new features that are coming. So the first thing I want to show off is that I now support zip files as a uh, import type. So when you download a pocket query, for example, when you save the zip file to your computer, you can just take and drag it into Mac Caching. So one of the first things you might notice is importing will take a little bit longer than it used to. There's a brand new back end to Mac Caching, and one of the new back one of the advantages of this new back end is that I now store all of the log information. And so that's why on imports it'll take a little longer. The logs will be exported on two things, CacheMate and one other feature that I'll show you in just a minute. So one thing you might notice is that right off the bat, Mac Caching is much faster and much more responsive than it used to be. For example, when I type in a search term on the top of the uh, screen here, let's say I type in GC1, which will show me where in any of the fields for your caches, if the letters GC1 show up, that shows up in the listing now. And there's 126 caches that contain this. Another one I can think of is like pound sign 1 or pound sign 2, pound sign 3, those kinds of things. Usually series will be labeled in such a way. Now, another way to search through the cache listing is by creating a smart cache list. What you'll notice is that purple means smart and blue means, I don't know, not so smart. So if I go up here to file new smart cache list, we have a new window. This window has a number of fields that you can go and say I want to look for things within that field. So for example, if I wanted to look for any caches that contain GC1, I could do it this way. And then say I wanted to only get those caches that are micros. So then I can add a line. I want when the size is micro. And then I'll undo this limit and say OK. So if I go to this now, when I look through here, first of all, only, my, only caches that are micro show up. And GC1, anytime the GC code has GC1 in it, it shows up. I can go in here and I can edit this and maybe remove this line and change this to um, if the short description contains fun. I've never tried this, so let's find out. Looks like this one shows up as fun, so we'll go click on here and look at the short description and it says, thanks, have fun. Well, you know it worked. Another new feature I said in Mac caching is log capability. So if I right click on a cache, I can just go to view logs and now I can show you the logs that were in the pocket query. Depending on the last time you used Mac caching, you might not have seen this new window. So I'll show you the window for exporting to a GPS. As always, Mac caching has supported Garmin and Magellan GPS units, both of serial and USB connection. If we look at the paperless options, CacheMate is here and a new one is now here, iPod Notes. This will actually take your caches and store them as a text file on your iPod if you set up iTunes correctly. So you can take with your i now when you go out paperless caching, you can take almost the entire cache information with you on your iPod. Both iPod Notes and CacheMate will support logging. And for those of you who ran into a bug with the uh, iPod contacts where the hint might get deleted, it's now fixed. Lastly, what I'll tell you is that uh, for the name of the geocache, when it gets exported to your GPS, you can either have the GC code, which is GC whatever, 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 or the name. And so for, especially for Explorers users, I know that by using the long name, you'll get the names in your GPS instead of just the GC whatevers. Also, if you have an older GPS unit that can't support the really long GC codes that geo, geocaching.com is using now, Strip GC will remove those from the GC code before sending them, sending them off to your GPS. This is just a taste for some of the new features. There have been over 30 new features and bugs fixed in this upcoming version of Mac Caching. I'm looking forward to releasing it to you. Let me know if you have any questions. Please feel free to visit maccaching.com or my forums at forums.maccaching.com. Thanks.